All right, guys, welcome back to Swan Talk. Uh, this is episode number three. Um, y'all have been killing it with the support, and I can't thank you enough. I'm your host, Justin Swanstrom, and today we have our first special guest, um, Jim Howe. You know, he has been around racing, you know, his whole life, basically my whole life. I've been a part of racing. I've known who he is. Um, he races with us in Street Outlaw, No Prep Kings, um, and, you know, everything to it. So being the first guest, you know, usually it's, you know, the boys, me, Big country, my uncle Mike, but uh, I wanted to bring some guests on, and he was down here from Tennessee, and I asked him if he would come on to be our uh, first special guest. So we're going to go ahead and uh, jump right into it. Um, kind of already introduced you, you know, who you are. If you have a little bit more you want to talk about real quick, as in uh, just uh, what, your, uh, what, what, it, what it was it like. Um, we'll just dive right into it. What was it like for your NPK season for this year? Let's do a quick little oh, recap God. for you. And it was like getting up every day and getting your ass kicked over and over again. Pull the mic up closer to you. So, yeah, so like what, what out of the whole entire year, you know, let's do uh, – we did a recap yesterday between me and him mm -hmm. um, doing everything. But, I mean, you said that, you know, it was uh, like getting up and getting your ass kicked. I mean, it, it was a tough schedule. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. It, was, it was really hard. Um, I believe – where did you finish? I want to say it was 13th or 14th. Not far enough, whatever it was. But, you know <laughs> – so, I mean, we, but it's still good. There was yeah. fucking forty-five racers. There's yep. other ones, so it was still better. Now that's why, like I, me and him talked about yesterday. I mean, we finished ninth, and out of the whole year that we had, I mean, finishing off the last race with a win helped me out tremendously. Yeah, it absolutely. gave me enough points to be able to get back up front because I was all the way back at twenty-fourth. Like it was bad. And you know, the other part is we went out. <clears throat> I think you went out six or seven races eight. first round. Yeah, eight, eight races eight. first round. So that's that half was, the season. That was when I was getting fired. <laughs> That's half, half the season. But, right I there. mean, if you if we were averaging three rounds, I told him at the beginning of the year, you know, if you if a car can average three rounds, you're going to be there at the end. It's going to be hard to beat that car. If he can just go three rounds every fucking race, it's going to be hard to beat him. If you add those points up across the board, 30 points every fucking race, and get to the end, I said it'll be there. But, you know, through the middle of the season, once we had that backfire issue, I mean, and we were racing so hard, there was no time to figure it out. We had to figure it out at the track. You know, and it just was fucking just kept until we finally just swapped everything out of the fucking car. It went away. Well, like so. for us, and I know, you know, we talked enough during the season amongst the three of us that we all kind of <laughs> seen some stuff this year that we've never seen. And that, you know, we could go do a track rental. Uh, we could go test and we'd put career best numbers down. Be like, you know, and I told everybody, like, we're the test and tune champion of the world. Uh, we'd go out there and go career best like everything was good show up on race day and, and it started the whole year started with a simple spark plug issue and nobody had seen that yet. Nobody else was having the spark. Were plug you blowing issues. out the centers? Yes. And then, yeah. you know, we started blowing the centers out and everybody was like, Oh, we've never seen that before. And I'm like, I, I mean, I mean either, but we're doing it. Yeah. So then, uh, you know, Dan and, uh, and I, we stayed up one night beating spark plugs apart with hammers and, uh, looking at how, what was causing this. And we made a roll pin deal to start with. We rigged some stuff up and made it work. Well, then uh, Javi seen what we were doing and Javi said, hey, Proline sells a kit. Mm -hmm. And we were like, oh God, we don't yeah. have to make all this up anymore. So we bought, you know, we called Eric. Uh, actually, uh, Ryan Martin got me some coming to the next race. But we lost like three races in a row due to dropping cylinders. So those first three races, it was ignition problems. And then it was like, man, you know, then we go out and total the car out. Yeah. And so I, I remember know. that. That was uh that was up at uh, Minnesota. Minnesota right? Yeah. Did, didn't you stop doing that? Whatever it was with the spark did. plugs. Um. So uh, there's they have a how I guess how the spark plugs read out. Um. If if it had the number two in it, you had to put the inserts in. Um. And I get my inserts from Proline too. But then it just supposedly it was just a bad batch and. Right. Um, now the spark plugs that are kind of already through, if you look at the numbers now, it'll read a, a single digit number. Then it'll, it was reading like two, eight, nine or two, nine, seven. Now it'll read three, three, one, four, three, five, six. If it's got the number three in it, they said, do not take the plug apart. Cause when you take the plug apart, then it's going to uh, break the porcelain and all that. Um, so I said, you know what, I'm going to start, I'm just going to chance it. I'm just going to start running because it, it sucks whenever you take them apart because you do take a chance yep. of breaking them, putting them together. And I was the only one to put my plugs together. Um, I let my guys put them together one time and we broke a plug. And after that, I started putting them together. Dwayne, he had uh, one of his crew members putting uh, his plugs together and dude, they were knocking them out left and right. And I told Dwayne, I said, with this deal here, 
you're going to have to put them together yourself just so you're extra careful because that deal there, when you lose a cylinder, I mean, you lose a lot of horsepower and that's yeah. where it comes in the deal. But um, I took the chance when I heard about the whole number two to three deal. I didn't know if it was real or not. And knock on wood, I've never had an issue since. Um, I don't run the inserts no more. Um, those things started costing a lot. Um, yeah. But uh, you were able to reuse them. Now, like Clay Cole, um, good <laughs> buddy of mine, he was throwing them away every he pass. Know. He didn't know. He thought you oh, couldn't right. reuse them. Yeah. So, you know, he bought them at 200 They're $8 a pop, and he was throwing them out every hit. So right. I thought, I said, man, where's that dumpster at? Let right. me go yeah, find those. Dig through them. <laughs> So, so that like, was a deal there. You're right on the new one. So what we did in, in Jimmy's car, in the OG car, we mm -hmm. started putting the newer batches. NGK sent a new box in. They said, these are the new ones. You don't have to do it with it. So we put those plugs in the Warden, and we were just to try them out. Just to try. And we didn't have any failures with it, so that's good. But, you know, we're out there running in For NGK, sure. and I've already got the older set. I've already got the inserts. Mm -hmm. And so we made the decision, like, look, Dan put the plugs together. He's he did a good job. We never broke one. He never we never had an issue as long as Dan was doing the plugs. As long as it's the same person doing it yep. every time. And so we left that. Like in other words, our thing was if it wasn't broke, don't fix it. Agreed. We don't want to go back and drop plugs again because you've seen what that little bitty piece of porcelain did to Dwayne's motor. Oh yeah. People don't realize how hard porcelain will eat a cylinder, like it will tear a sleeve up in a motor. Mm -hmm. uh, so you know we went through that and then we totaled the car and uh, in Minnesota, and then. You know, I tried, I, I jumped over into the GTR and we ran it. Um, and I tried every way in the world to make that thing faster. I even put my drivetrain down in it. And, uh, you know, we fought some issues with that car. And so then fighting issues with that car, one, I was waiting on my car, my new car to get built. Um, you know, it was, uh, it was like we were on the struggle bus. It was like the worst hamster wheel ever. Uh, yeah, it, it was, it was a definitely a, a hard thing here. And that's kind of be my, uh, my first question for you, uh, what do you think was the biggest struggle for this season out of the whole entire year? What was biggest struggle? I feel like it was parts breakage that we're not used to breaking. Like, I mean, we, we went to steel Alabama and we broke an oil pan. Not, you know, not, it, I've it, seen that. I, I bet, yeah. I bet $400 on them. And I was wondering why you shut off. And then yeah. you told me they broke, I guess, I think it broke the seam. Yeah. It didn't even break the weld. No, it was yeah, right in a roll. And, right in a roll of it. It broke the seam. And it was it. a brand new oil pan. Like, and you know, like we try, um, <laughs> I thought I thought you blew an oil line again because you were, you did blow an oil line at the yeah, one race. We had, yeah, that was when he he oiled the track down. Yeah, right? he blew the yeah, oil yeah, line, right. and I and then whenever it happened again, I said, "Man, it came I, right out of the burnout and did it, didn't yep. it?" Yep. Yeah, and then I right. told, I said, "I I was even, I was up there in the stands with the fans, and I seen it. I'm like, well, maybe it blew another oil line. I thought you had told yep. me that you had went ahead and changed yeah, all the we, oil lines, so, but then you told me like, oh, it's an oil pan. I'm like, <laughs> it's just a freak of nature deal. Right. I mean, we just couldn't do right. Um, just like that deal, that was an SFI crimped oil line. Mm -hmm. And we're up on the starting line, and I'm getting ready to go up, and I don't even remember who we ran, but it wasn't like I felt confident about the round. Yeah. And, you know, I rev the motor up behind the starting line, and Jimmy comes over and, you know, tells me to cut it off. I'm like, what's wrong? And he's like, shut it off, shut it off. He's like, bad oil leak. And I'm like, well, fix it. Yeah, there ain't no know, fixing that one. And he was like, yeah, no, we ain't fixing this one. Yeah, it pumped, so, it pumped it all out in the right, start line. So, I seen that. So he said, he said, Dad, there's a there's like three gallons of oil on the start line. I'm like, man. So, you know, we went back, and it was an SFI line that failed in the crimp. So immediately then, I don't want to have that problem in my car. I don't want to have it in the GTR, and I don't want to have it in Jimmy's car. So that meant right then I had to call, and I ordered all new lines for every car. It was like three thousand dollars. We did yeah. every single, every line, every fuel line, every line on the cars got replaced, um, and so we tried to eliminate those dumb failures. And then we go to steel, and we, you know, we blow and break an oil pan. I mean, who breaks an oil pan? It was just every time we turned around, it was something that I've never broke before, um, and I just kept thinking that, like, you know, it's we're going to get to the end of it. But the saving grace in all of it was is that any one of those problems had happened at the finish line. I would have to, I'd have totaled another car. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, really, uh, you know, I'm thankful that it happened where it did. And, and uh, you know, we didn't, I certainly couldn't go through totaling another car last year. We'd have been done. After after you after you got the car back, was uh, was the car temperamental? Did it take a little while to get, yes. get it back in the, because it was bad fast yep. before you wrecked. I mean, yep. so. It took a little while and it, it just goes to show you, like, they're, none of them are the same. It, it's always something a little tweak here and a little tweak there. It really wasn't until we went to, um, we went to Galat and I spent some time, uh, with, so, you know, Scotty Cannon came over there with me and then Mark Menser came and we rented the track and we got to do some testing over there. 
And we finally had the car by Galat to where when we made a shock change or any change to the car, it responded as it needed to, just like you would think it would need to. And, and so then we were on, you know, we we're like, we're on top of the earth. We're thinking we're going to go kick everybody's tail, you know, like we've got our hot rod back. And we were fast. We were fast, fast testing over there. So, you know, then we go uh, into the next race and, you know, we have the, the next issue and then the next issue. And then at the end of the year, it ended up that, so we didn't rewire the car. We took the harness out of the crash car and put it in this car. <clears throat> if you ever wreck a car, do not reuse the harness. Mm. We were out of time. And I can tell you what happened during the cut and disassembly and all that of the chassis. Something got nicked. The sparks off of <coughs> grinders got into that Haltech wire harness. And it actually got in between two of those real little like 22 gauge wires. And where our piston problem and all the problems that we had towards the end of the year were coming from was I had two wires that were touching together and that wire was actually a timing adder. I run a scramble on the butt on the steering wheel and it had two degrees on that button. Well, the race pack would show I had a little more timing in the motor than what I thought that it should have. Well, as you know, if you put the race pack sensor a couple degrees off, it'll read a couple yeah. degrees off. So like in my mind, looking at data, I was like, oh, I mean, it's, it's, I mean, I'm not, I know what it's got looking at time and light. And so time and light's what it reads. And so I know it's good. Well, I can't ride underneath the hood of it with a time and light. So, you know, I'm thinking that that race pack just degree and a half or two degrees is what I'm seeing. Well, it ended up that that degree and a half or two degrees that I kept seeing in the race pack was really that timing, that button being push but I wasn't pushing it it was those two wires making contact gotcha. and it was adding two degrees of time into the motor um of course now we know that like it'll haul ass early and <laughs> we yeah. just got to take yeah. it back out yeah. of it because we were hurting stuff so uh yeah. you know we learned a little bit when we tore up some stuff in the you know in the process so now going forward cars gonna you when, know get rewired when you say uh and I, I probably know but I don't know when you say wreck car and now new car. Did you build a whole nother car or did you fix the car? Exactly? About the only thing left of the other car was <coughs> the rear window, the trunk lid. Um, we'll say we eight, more than 80% of the car was replaced. So essentially we, <coughs> built, we built a brand new car and then that's kind of what happened to his car. Yeah. Then when he got hit and got knocked yeah. around the wall, they knocked the ass end off and knocked the front end off and, all the fucking doors, everything was whacked. I, fuck, I think the quarter panel got fucked up. So yeah. Probably been better off if we just like pushed it over in the corner and started fresh, fresh. But, yeah. you know, we were lucky to get it out. It, when is, we did. it is tough, um, you know, rebuilding cars like that. I mean, but it costs a lot of money, so you kind of have yep. to do what it is. But, I mean, I don't know. I don't know what your bill was. I know what mine was whenever I redid it. And, and you know, it was up there close to a hundred grand to yep. get it all done. And, um, you know, it adds up pretty quick. <sighs> yeah. um, so... But you were able to get it back, come back, you know, win some deals and all that. But uh, who was your uh, – I'm going to go ahead and ask, you know, who was your biggest opponent going in, you know, to this season? Who did you – who did you – I mean, I wouldn't say, like, had a problem with because you'd race anybody, just kind of like me. I'd race anybody too. But, like, when you go up to run against them, you had to have been, like – you had to make sure you were on your A game at, no matter what. Or someone that just had your number. Just had yeah. So It may be somebody that's yeah. not even that, yeah. that fast, but just some reason – Yep. They were able to pull off the win. <laughs> well, I mean, and there's there's actually a couple, a couple of those guys. Damon Merchant had it for sure. You know, it didn't matter if I pulled up to run Damon Merchant, something would be wrong with the car. Like mm -hmm. it, it never failed. We we'd break a trans. We we lost a uh, um, we lost a slider in the trans once. Uh, we had a spark plug issue. Like it just no matter what, anytime I drew him, yeah, it was like double check the car completely because something's going to tear up. And then finally, we ended up getting a chance to to race him when we were healthy, and you know I beat him, and that felt good. And the other one is Nate Sailor, like that gum boy. If I, it seems like if I run Nate, and it's your guys' fault. It's just uh, it's both y'all's fault. Why would we you, do? Last year, y'all started that shit with me and Nate grudge <laughs> racing, and so I run gr grudge, you know, grudge Nate last year, and uh, I had a problem at Steel when I run him, and he kicked my tail and, and uh, got in my pocket on that grudge race. Yeah. And then this year. He's fast. And yeah. so, like, you can't afford to have anything go sideways. He's got it in for John. Now. I can tell you that yeah. right now. <laughs> he, yeah, we talked we talked to him at our yeah. last uh, last video. Yeah. And uh, I know we were talking about that, the grudge race. that Because I see the video on the internet. I guess that him and one of the guys got into it at the other end of the track. And I yeah. didn't know exactly what happened. 
Um, I guess uh, he had some, from how he explained it, he had some issue with the dash and had to turn the car off and they felt like it was a burn down or whatever, but uh, going into it and then, uh, you know, I guess they grudge race and John won. Well then, you know, how John is John went, goes right to the internet and posts up the video and how big the gap is. And I seen the post. Uh, so he said he can't wait to run him again uh, just because of that right. whole deal Nate, right there. Nate said, Nate said, I walked through him. I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means. <laughs> because, uh, he said, when we got there, I walked through him. I'm I walked like, through him to give them. He's like, what does that mean? <laughs> so, to get the money to get the money to yeah. John. I don't know. Hey, Dad, make sure you pull that mic up closer to you. I can hear it in my, my I know, deal's but good. It doesn't sound all good on there. I'm just telling you how it is. There you go. So, I feel like I'm sucking dick right here. I'm on the train, but I mean, fuck. <laughs> so I never knew about the whole scenario. Like, a lot of people just assume because, you know, it's it's all ran out of my camp and, and – like that I know everything that goes on and I don't, I'm focused on making the cars run and doing what I'm doing. Well, I had no idea there was this problem on a starting line. I had no idea there was this problem in the shutdown area. The first time I seen it was on video. Yeah. And then I'm like, what the hell is this about? Like you guys got into it with these guys. And I guess that, um, one of my guys was mad because he was taking too long to stage and thought he was burning John down. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I mean, it, I, I get like that too. Yeah. I, I can't stand I when right somebody's on the other lane yeah. and they take forever. Yeah. And there's a few of them out there that yeah. we we already know. I let them go do a burnout and start backing thing. up before yeah. I fire my car up. And like even when we're in the burnout box, they're like, "Oh, fire's up," and I'm like, "No, go do your stuff." I'm trust me, I'm gonna be there. Yeah. But it, it takes us right now. We can make a pass in about a minute and fifteen seconds. I'm good. I'm, we're set up. We're ready where we're going. We're going to go do it. It is what it is. Don't matter who we're running. So you got people, and, uh, you know, and, and they're, they know who they are. I mean, like yep. Kayla Morton, I, I love her to death. That's just how they That's stage. just how they Let stage. Them do their thing. Kayla Morton, Paige Coughlin, great racers. They're just slower. Liz, Birdman. Liz, Lizzie's uh, a little slow. Lizzie, Dominator. Dominator takes forever to back the car up. And, you know, you, you, you're you losing fuel. You the, the engine's getting hotter. I'm fat, so I'm sitting in the car getting hotter. I'm getting aggravated, and it's just yeah. how it is. So I, I tell yeah. people all the time, like, if I'm going to go race, I'm hey, go do your burnout. Go get everything, and I'm going to come right behind you. I want to get back to you, you asked Jim what were who was the hardest for him to beat. There was two cars this year for me. And they weren't, they are not cars that I ever would think about that I have a problem to outrun, but I got beat by them every time. And, you know, of course, we went through our struggles with, with prenup, but one was Scott Taylor. That motherfucker mm -hmm. got me every fucking time. I mean, and it, he would just barely beat him, beat yeah. member, you know, and I was, I was struggling trying to get the car down track. And the other one is fucking um, David Gates, Red David, Run. Dude, the motherfucker it. got us every time, too. And, and the worst part about it, it was just that. It, I think it was when, most of us we didn't make the trip. We were popping the blower. We yeah. didn't make the pass. But when prenup was good, like I, nothing against Scott or David, I just never felt like like they can outrun us. You know, what I mean, I always felt like we're gonna outrun them. You know, and but man, those two guys just fucking did they have beat my us up this year? Every every time, yeah. every time I ran them going to grudge race against David Gates, it was yeah. you know it was pretty rough. It's costly. I was like, <laughs> it hurt yeah. my feelings whenever you guys like run him. And I was like, oh god, he's going back for more. But I feel the way you do. I feel like prenup's a you, faster You car. had an opportunity to win, and yeah. that's how I was. I lost the yep. first race in Alabama. Um, to me, I could have probably drove it to the finish line, but, you know, I wanted to race on Saturday, and I was, you know, trying to gain points and all that, and the car carried the wheels out pretty far for me, how I like it. And I told him I got out of it and threw the chutes, and he just came around me at the end. The second race, you know, I treat him. I was out probably a car and a half on him, and the car was tracking right up on the center line. And I just didn't want. I mean, I've wrecked a car before. It ain't fun. I don't. I don't want to yeah. hit the wall. So I got out of it. It is what it is. But he was able to pull off a win, and you know, he was a good sport about it. I mean, he he didn't like throw it in my face or anything. So it was a good yeah. deal. And then when we have a chance, we're gonna uh, we're gonna go ahead and try to get that race back. Try to get some yeah. of my money back because uh, he's in my pocket pretty good right now. Yeah, uh, like, what's bad, I, you know, and I'm glad that we're talking about it because there's something that a lot of folks who watch and listen to us online, they, they really don't understand. Sadly, everybody wants to know what happened. You know what I'm saying? Well, why didn't you win? Well, you tell them why you didn't win, and the first thing they say is, well, quit making excuses. You know, so, and like, or uh, you just don't have enough for them or whatever, and, and like, the deal is, I want to race whoever anytime any place anywhere it's just like when um whenever we race somebody and we get outrun yes i want to race them again 
Like yeah. we're just going to keep going back for more. And so I seen that with you and Gates and I'm sitting back going, man, like my money's going to be on Justin. I know Justin can outrun him, but it's like, it was like I said, like some of those guys have got like a voodoo doll back just in the trailer a number. and they're just like poking it. And, uh, you know, you know, and what's too with him or with us, we rarely lose a grudge race. I mean, rarely. Right. That is no bullshit. When the money's on the line, we may not race for the fuck on Saturday. We do. We do when pretty it, good. When it comes time to grudge yeah. race, just like even if we make it to the finals, he's a hundred percent when he makes yep. it to the finals. I mean, we just got to make it there. We just yeah. <laughs> so so the in between ain't worth <laughs> fuck. You know what I mean? But if it's if we do a grudge race and it's right out the gate, we're usually really good. But like I said, prenup just she just got a little pissed off this year, and I told him at the end of the year. I told him, man, you should have just went out there and hit the fucking wall. I mean, the car was all shined up, and it, you know, it didn't like it. You <laughs> right. changed the wrap, you cleaned it up. Just fucking go out there and scrub the wall and put some duct tape on it, and it'll start running good again. Right. All right, guys, so we're going to go ahead and take a stop real quick and shout out to our sponsor for this video. Shout out to Garage Built Racing. Um, just want to go ahead and let you know that if you need anything for your race car, you can go ahead and reach out to them. It don't matter if it's wheels, turbos, nitrous system, suspension, safety components, or just swag for you and your family. You can head on over, check out Garage Built Racing, let them know that I sent you so you can get a hookup. They have been on board with us for a little while and I can't thank them enough and I wanna keep growing their deal, keep helping us out and I wanna be able to give y'all an opportunity or an option to be able to buy your stuff for your race car as well, or a street car. Any kind of car out there, you can check out their website, figure out if you need something, let them know that Justin Swantrum sent you and they will get you a discount, they will get you hooked up. Let's jump back into this podcast. So uh, let's go ahead and jump into your uh, your uh, drag racing and street racing background. Tell us a little bit about what you know. Oh, you already know he ain't street. I mean, yeah. I, 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 I heard that on TV. We're going we're gonna to get it. Yeah. Trust me, we're, we're going to bring that up here a little bit. But, uh, Big yeah, boost uh, said. you know, when did it all start for you? And, you know, how did it evolve throughout, you know, how long have you been racing? Um, has things changed, uh, you know, going into all the way up to season six of MPK? You know, tell us a little bit about it for the people that don't know who you are, what exactly sure. you do. I grew up in a racing family. My dad raced, uh, you know, he was a bracket racer and a uh, uh, racer in the Detroit area. And so we were from Detroit, Michigan, raced up there. Um, dad was a street racer, and that absolutely put him at the racetrack because he lost his driver's license and couldn't get insurance back when he was younger from all the street racing tickets. So he started drag racing. Then that turned into the family, you know, all of us drag raced. Uh, I started racing. There was a class uh, when I was growing up called Junior Eliminator, and uh, it started in like 1983, so I'd have been 10. And it was a 250 cc limit, anything under 250 cc's motorcycles, then the kids from eight years up to 16 could race. So that's where I started. I started uh, at eight years old, uh, running quarter mile on a motorcycle, and uh, that eventually evolved into drag bikes. And uh, when I was 15 years old, I started racing NHRA. And, uh, we raced at the track and my dad, we had a household rule. I wasn't allowed to street race, uh, or I'd lose my driving privilege. Cause at that time I drove for my dad. Well, like anybody else, I lived in the Detroit area and all the dad's friends were street racers. You know what I'm saying? Like those were the OG street racers, the gamblers, the guys that went out on Woodward. So fortunately all those guys had my back all those years. And uh, back then they would make sure they covered for me and they'd sneak me out and we'd go drag, we'd go street racing. And, and, you know, if my dad had ever found out about it when I was younger and looking back now, dad probably knew because they were yeah. all his friends, but had mom known. Yeah. Oh, I mean, we're talking about a woman who take the wheels off of a car and hang them from a tree. So you can't drive it. Mm -hmm. If you don't do like she was, she was brutal. And so most of dad's friends covered for me. And, um, you know, we, we went out and street raced and that was, uh, but like, unlike today's society, if we'd have posted a video up of us street racing, well, first of all, we didn't have smartphones and we didn't have the capabilities that we have now. But if you so much as breathe a word about a race spot uh, to general public, I mean, you you would be shunned from the you know from the street racing community to begin with because you don't want your spot burned. Now it seems like everybody's out there just yeah. videoing when we all these different streets. when we street race. I can tell you right now, we would all meet up. You know, because that's what I did. I learned on the street race. You know, that's all I did was street racing until I lost my license twice, got my car impounded, and finally I quit doing that shit. But 
we would meet up at one spot and whenever two cars would get a race on, you had to be careful because there's so many people there. You couldn't say what spot you're going to because all the vehicles would flood to that fucking yep. spot and they'd all be sitting on the side of the road. So we would always have three or four different spots. And then we kind of got smart. We'd tell, oh yeah, we're going to go to Fowler. Everybody haul ass to Fowler. We'd go out to Gandy. Yep. We had to go a different direction, you know, because that's just the way it was. I raced Gandy down here in the nineties. Uh, <laughs> I run, on Ga- I run on Gandy. Yep. So I run Gandy, Fowler. I run fucking over at Lumber, Lumber, Lumber Yard. Uh, I mean, I've, I've raced all over around here at street racing. Yeah, and that's so like we, we did a lot of that. Uh, and then when I moved to Tennessee, um, I'd never raced eighth mile. We'd all, I mean, obviously I raced quarter mile, so you got to go the first eighth to get to the quarter. But like we street raced quarter mile uh, yeah. where I'm from. And so when I came to Tennessee in 91, um, they were like eighth mile drag strips. And, and so that was something new to me and everything that you did like street racing was done eighth mile. And so, um, the street racing scene in our general area right there in Crossville, Tennessee, where I live, um, it was pretty decent back in the day. I mean, we had a, we had a lot of fun and, uh, and it was kind of one of those deals. We'd all meet up at a certain couple places and then you could go to Cleveland, Tennessee down on highway 68. Um, there was a lot of places that you could go do. Now keep in mind, we owned a drag strip at that time. So, you know, yep, I definitely was going out to the street races anytime we could because, number one, it was good for the business. You know, I'd get out and talk to those guys and say, hey, you know, we run scoreboards off. And that's what um, that type of stuff is what eventually evolved into a race series that, you know, I started called Bounty Race, and we ran scoreboards off no time. This was uh, 18 years ago, long before uh, the no time stuff of today was, you know, was around. But then I moved into running IHRA Top Dragster. Um, I went NHRA Super Comp, um, bracket raced, uh, bracket raced professionally. That's what I did for a living for a number of years. Then raced IHRA Top Dragster, uh, ran some top sportsman stuff. And that's where Scotty Cannon and I got to where we were good friends and we traveled all over together, you know, running uh, IHRA. Then I um, got married and had my daughter, uh, kind of stuck to more local stuff, doing quick eights and uh, that kind of stuff. And then... Keith Zabo called me in, would have been 2000, I think. My daughter was maybe a year old. Uh, Zabo called me in 2000, and he said, hey. Now, Zabo and I grew up together. We're both from Michigan. His dad and my dad were good friends, but they had moved to Atlanta. And he said, hey, I'm going to be in Jackson, Tennessee this weekend um, running this uh, small tire deal. He said, you should come down. And I was like, what, what do you mean small tire deal? What is it? Uh, and he told me, you know, what it was that they were doing. And I was like, okay, I'm going down there. So I went to my first small tire race at Jackson, Tennessee with Keith Zabo and I was hooked. So from that point forward, I started backing away from the big tire IHRA stuff. And, uh, we started fooling around with some small tire, uh, you know, fast, fast cars. And my, the street car that I raced on the street back then ran bottom sixes in the eighth mile. Um, but that going to that race with him. That evolved uh, the Malibu that I built, which was a mid-five-second car, and we drove it on the street, too. Um, and then eventually my Camaro, the, what is the Warden now, the first year that car was built, uh, I built it to race on the street and drive on the street. It never made it to a racetrack for the – well, and initially it did. It, the, I had a grudge race at our local track when the car was first done. But uh, I built the car to race on the street and drive on the street. And so we did that for about a year or so before – I finally put the blower motor in it, took a nitrous motor out, and then that evolved into, you know, basically the race program we have now where we did the blown alcohol stuff. So So it's 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 been a it's been a long road. It's been yeah. I didn't something. think you were that old. Yeah, I'm fifty. Yeah, you old. Old. Yeah. How old are you, Dad? I got him capped. <laughs> How old are you? I'm going on fifty three. Yeah. yeah. Pops is a little older than I am. But yeah, it's uh, I feel it too. I feel yeah. sixty three though. What uh you know, so Talking about that, you know, from back then to now. See, I never street raced or did none of that. I mean, all my tracks uh, or all my racing has been on the track other than this last little deal that we did out there in California. And it was cool for me. I mean, we we raced like shit. And we went yep. out first round, but it was a fun experience. And I told them if I if I got invited out to do it again, I'd be better prepared this time. Yeah, but we just had for it. the car you had, you did well. And for what that car was doing out there, you did extremely well. Yeah, but so. like, so you didn't street race, but pops did. Yeah. Now, Pops, we got to talk about this for a minute because this is the truth. Gandy was five times the road that what we were racing on. Did you ever leave this house? 
to go street race and say, hey, can we find an Amish buggy road somewhere to race these cars on? Mm -mm. You never wanted to go out and race on some bullshit dirt road. Well, we, we had all of our spots. Yeah. That, but that's where everybody raced. And they were good spots. Mm -hmm. The problem that I've seen with the, with the show that we've done in some of these places, you know, like Sam asked me when we were out there in California, what do you think? I said, I think I should have brought a dune buggy. Yeah. But, but yeah. I'll tell you the difference, though. It, and, and I know what you're saying, but back when I street raced, we didn't have the electronics we have today. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you remember the old MSD chips you used yeah. to plug in <laughs> yeah, and you right. pulled time out. You know, I mean, the shit we yep. had. I, I mean, never it was had e that. It was either on or it was <laughs> off. There was yep. no progressive. There was the ECUs. Like, I, I, t I tell everybody, you know, that you want to see who's fucking fast, take the fucking ECUs away from everyone. Let's find out who gets down the fucking racetrack. Right. Yeah, because right now it's uh, uh, a deal, you know. Is Tyler calling you? Oh, I thought it was Tyler. Uh, he sent me a text. But, uh, um, yeah, so that that was a fun experience, you know, for for me to go out there and do that. But, you know, I wasn't part of uh, any kind of street racing growing up. And I've, I've, I've told everybody this. Even my friends know this, that, you know, I've been plenty fast. I've been, you know, probably faster than almost a lot of the people that, you know, ran MPK um, and all that. But, um I don't need to go fast on the street. So like, you know, even my buddies, you know, they got little souped up Mustangs and all that. And they're like, Hey, come ride with me. I, I kind of cherish my life. And I, yeah. I think about things like that and I can just see, you know, something bad happening. And I try to prevent that from happening. So yeah. like I tell them all the time, I mean, no disrespect to them, but there's really nothing that they have that will wow factor me. I mean, maybe somebody else, one of the other friends, that's cool. I go, I just, but I've been plenty fast enough that I don't have to go run on the street or do anything like that. And to go out there and run that show there, it was, you know, and everybody talks shit about it. Oh, it's a closed off deal or whatever, blah, blah, blah. It is what it is. I I, I had a blast and yep. I, I want to do it again. Um, you won't see me unload fucking prenup out of the back of a rollback trailer or whatever on the side of the interstate. It's not, it's not me. Right. But uh, that's just how I am, and I'm I'm honest when I say that. I don't yep. I don't need to lie and tell everybody that I no. you know I street race and do all that because I don't. Um, but uh, you but, know, but you can do it though. Trust me. That the yep. thing is the difference. Although you, you guys have double the horsepower we had. I mean, we had you know back when we ran our cars. You're talking anybody that had a 10 second car was fast. So most of them were low 11 second cars. You know, 1080s, 1070s. Those were quarter mile cars. You guys today are fucking got 4,000 fucking horsepower out there. But like well, I said, it's the ECUs <laughs> that allows you to run that kind of power out there. Without those ECUs, that car ain't going nowhere. Without the ratios, and the, the, the thing has evolved so much between the ratios, the converters, all that allows that car to go down the street. I mean, I think I, I don't know exactly how fast some of them are going, but I think some of them out there are running 450, 460. Yeah, right now. 150, yeah. 160 mile an hour for and sure. The, and, the, and then whenever they were running the big tire stuff out there, I mean, I talked with Ryan and Kai, and I don't know how true it is, but, you know, they told me there were some streets they go to where they get real good. They go 420s. Yes. Out there, you know, I and spun I, I've seen one of them go. I watched Kai and Ryan both go down there and throw shoots out in the middle of the street. Yeah. And I'm like, now that's a little little scary skeptical, but that's just what they've grown up on and what yep. they've done. Um, and that's where, you know, I see a lot of these people that run that behind the or at the back of the track or run on the street deal. And they always try to invite, you know, people like MPK to come out there and, and run it because they feel like they can't do it. And that's what I've always I've even told them on the internet is that you just ain't had the right person come out there and put the money and put the because right. because that's the time. But the time, the knowledge. Trust me, they would come out there and just cause havoc. I mean, Ryan yep. proved that going out there to California, bought a car six days prior, yep. went tested, and then come out there, beat everybody, and won the whole deal. And then everybody that was, you know, Cali Nate and all them that was all these, you know, big wigs, dude, they got they got fucked up. I mean, yep. I got fucked up, but I'm not a street racer. Them yep. are King Almighty's and got fucked up. But that's they what got, I try to say. They got tore up in their hometown dude, on I, a surface they race on. And you're talking to anyway, a guy, a, yeah. a guy that, you know, they, they came out there and did it. It's not something that he dedicates his time to and nothing yep. against them. But that's why I try to say you're not even like I told uh, Bobby had to run Ryan in the finals. And, you know, Bobby's like, well, I, I think I, I kind of have something. And he does. Bobby runs good on there. But like I told Bobby, Ryan's got 4,000 horsepower. That nitrous motor that Bobby had in the car don't make 4,000 horsepower. No. At any time that Ryan feels like he needs a little bit more. <laughs> 
He, my dad said with the ECUs, it's so controllable. Yeah. He just turns it up it's a little just bit. just power management. So he ran against Bobby, and the first race, he, he got jumped on, and he still came around him. Well, he already knew, okay, this is kind of where he's going to be at. Let me just go ahead and turn it up. Second race just completely gapped him. It is what right. it is. But, you know, that's what's going to come into the deal. And that's why I said if I if I was able to get invited again, I'd be better prepared. I had, yep. I'd have the right stuff and uh, move forward and, and, and go about it that way. Um, but, uh, yeah, the, the street racing deal is, is pretty fun. And I think, you know, times have probably changed a lot from y'all from racing back in the day to this now. I mean, it's changed for me from yes. just racing from 2015 to 2023. Um, it costs a lot more now. Uh, it right. does that. And, you know, uh, but, you know, you got to you got to stay up with the pack. You know, you got to you got to spend a lot of money on parts and everything and try to buy the best of the best stuff to be able to keep running forward. Because if not, you'll get left behind. And that's why I try to tell people, if you take you take three to six months off, you're behind. You're like way behind because there's so much that's happening so fast. And um, that's what's going on with that. But uh, so we're going to go ahead and uh, move on to our next little segment. Um, What's next for you? What's uh, what's next in y'all's little program and uh, moving forward? Uh, what's the next big thing for Jim Howe and Howe Motorsports? Well, we're working on, you know, obviously we've got the OG car out right now, and Jimmy's been driving it. Mm-hmm. Um, we made some big headway with that thing, and uh, you know, we've got this new back half, like ten five style class that MPK is going to start running. Is that the one Reapers pushing too? No, that's some daily driver deal. Uh. But the OG back half class, which is basically the original Outlaw 10-5 style yeah. rules. It's fucking cold in this son of a bitch. Feels good. Get hang meat yeah. in this bathroom. <laughs> yeah. I but, keep uh, sitting over trying to cover up. That's, uh, we want to do some of that um, and get Jimmy uh, moving in. You know, the overall goal is to get him uh, moved up and run MPK eventually. And that's, uh, you know, kind of what we're hoping for. But um, I just built a Camaro. Um, 47,000 actual mile mm-hmm. SS because they blew the motor up in it. So we built a How Motorsports 6.0, like 500 horse pump gas deal. Yeah. Got the car running. Um, but the guy that I got it from, uh, <coughs> he was going through a bad time. It had a 45 slug through the front windshield and knocked the rear window out <laughs> just before yeah. I got it. So that was Safe Light. And I've had it scheduled to have glass put in it tomorrow. And when they're calling, I'm like, them son of a bitches, they're going to tell me they're missing something. And sure enough, they were. They don't have the back glass. And they wanted to come out and do just the front. No. You come out and bring them both or don't bring nothing. Like, yeah. So I have to reschedule it. You know, I, I know you're going down to run Pro Mod. Are you running that with your car? Yeah. So I had an opportunity. We were going to drive another car, mm-hmm. uh, do a Pro Mod car. And um, rather than do that, I think it's better for the brand. And I think it's better for... It's better not only for the How Motorsports brand, but I think it's better for the MPK and Street Outlaws brand too that uh, I take my No Prep King car down there and, and run it because, you know, I feel like as long as we don't have a bunch of dumb luck, I feel like I know where the car is going to be at in the, you know, in the field. Um, I think it will be good. And that's win, lose, or draw. If we go down there and can't qualify, then, you know, it's just testing – Anyway, but you know, make no mistake, we're going to go down there and swing for the fences. And, and uh, well, here, here, first of all, what people won't understand is you're going to be down there 225 pounds over fucking weight yep. of what I mean, I don't know how light your car can get, but that the weights we run at, you're yep. going to be 225 pounds over pro mod fucking weight. So, one, it's hard to overcompensate that, yep. you know, and and two. The way our the motors in your car, the position of it, it's just not a pro mod. It's not, right. and so we we've done it twice, and but we only did it because we wanted to test. It wasn't right. because we were going to be down there with a great track, prep for pro mod, and we were going to go down there and get good data, and that's mm-hmm. why we did it. Um, it wasn't, you know, did we want to make the field? Sure, we did. I mean, what did we get out? Got bumped out by a couple hundreds. You know, yep. fucking, not, we, it's nothing. To it's hang a your fast field. Pro mod, pro yeah. mod's hard to run. Yeah, I think the bump will probably be like around a sixty-eight. Right? Yeah. I think that's where it's going to be, uh-huh. and that's what we're thinking too. And I, I feel like if that's where it's at, then I'll be right there at the bottom of the of the barrel. And uh, you know, but same deal. I can't go rent a racetrack for that number of days mm-hmm. to get any testing in. That's we're right. wanting to try some stuff anyway. Yeah, you just go run that down there. So I can go down there and run it. It's right close to Amanda's family, so her her family lives. 20 minutes from the racetrack uh they can come down hang out with us and do yeah. all that stuff um and i think it's good for the brand and 
you know, we both know, you guys know this too, any one of those 32 cars can win that thing. For mm-hmm. sure. We have Hell, seen 32, it. number 32 last year won. We have seen it more than one time. Yeah. So, like, my thing is get me in there, let me get some laps. Uh, it's good for the crew. Uh, we found some stuff, you know, through the winter during the off time that we were doing incorrectly. Um, you know, we lined the car up. Your dad will tell you, like, I have came to him a bunch of times and been like, man, Corey, was my car straight? Do they have me lined up straight? And uh, we actually found something in the car that uh, Dan was looking at. We had marked on the car where mm-hmm. center of the car was. Yeah. And uh, it's actually not center of the car. So oh, we, car, car can get messed up yeah, if it's not lined yeah. up so right. We're, we're going to fix that. Um, really, it's, you know, when you go testing, it's more than us testing the car. It's testing the crew. It's everybody, you know, we've had some time off, so it gives us a chance to get back in the groove. For sure. Um, and then, uh, you know, Scotty Cannon's going to come down there with me, and uh, Scotty's brother is going to drive uh, his Pro Mod car. And so uh, we get to go down there and hang out and, and uh, you know, do what we do. And, and that's... Um, just be a, it'll be a good a good experience for all of us, and then I think we're going to put the screw blower on the warden and and uh, come over there and run LDR and let Jimmy run LDR at Bradenton with the screw on it. Nice. Um, and uh, you know we'll give it a we'll give it a shot. It just depends on how much work we get done between now and then. We've got are y'all uh are y'all going to be staying with the same combo for season seven of MPK? That just depends on the rules. Uh, this uh, I'm waiting to see what the rules say. Um, we do have an opportunity to do something different, and uh, we may do that. It just depends on what they're going to do with the rules. Uh, I'm done playing catch-up. I'm done hearing about, um, well, if you don't like it, then change to this or you change to that. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm done beating the stuff up for nothing. And if I see that there is a better combination based by the rules, then uh, we may we may make that change. Okay. So, um, And it's just – I'm. It's, I'm frustrated with the whole deal. Yeah. Uh, no, you ask everybody, it's just you got to work harder. I've been telling all of them, like even in our little group chat, um, that, you know, we got, you know, me, Ryan, Kai, and all of us in there, and uh, they were talking shit about, you know, screw blowers or, you know, one at the beginning of the year. And then they struggled a little bit there in the middle, and then I was able to pull off the win at the end. But, mm. and like I told them, I mean, you got to have a lot of luck to win an MPK event right now. I mean, yep. it's good to be good. But you got to have a lot of luck to win because there's a lot of great racers out there um, to be able to do that. Where you know that 136, um, you expressed about it all year, and now you yeah. see it on these other sanctioned events. They right. just threw it away like it's yeah. gone, and we're the only one that runs it. It's just because I was crying. Those yeah, other sanctioned, they, I mean, they listen to me and change their rules. Yeah, so that's where <laughs> I uh, and I've said the same thing, and now now I just tell them I, I just I said, y'all just need to work on your program and yep. just that and do they get they get butt hurt quick on when it comes into that but I mean it is what it is um, you know moving forward like you said for the rules and all that you just gotta see what's gonna come out and uh, and how we're gonna you know tackle the, the new year right. um, you well know. there's a lot of new guys that's gonna come out and run the screw supposedly. But yeah, now the, they're all switching over. To the screw. thing is, though, I can't wait. What I they can, will find everybody out, keeps saying, <laughs> what they will find right out is yeah. their shit's harnessed. There's yeah. nothing. You there's can no. Do. There's no change. You can't. You can't, you can't, can't spin come it up with higher. Some magic, magical shit. Yeah. And you know, like what you got is what you got, and that's it. What it is, you're gonna have to make it work. Yeah. But you got, and I get it. They're gonna have smart people behind them, and yes, they're gonna do good. I'm not taking that away from them. But they're not just gonna come out there and just dominate like they think they are. Like they're just gonna like you know a couple of them are. Oh, I'm gonna show y'all how they should run. Well, I can't wait. Come out there. Let's let's see. I mean, I don't. I I like to consider myself humble. I don't. I don't try to stick my chest out and tell anybody. But I will say that blown alcohol stuff is something that I've been doing for a very long time, and I've proven on multiple platforms that we can be the best Mm -hmm. at what we do. And. If there's somebody out there who's going to be that much better with a screw blower than what I am, I want them to come out there because I'm going to be taking notes. Yeah. I mean, I, I just, that's just how our problem isn't horsepower. Our problem is the dumb shit that we've had to deal with. But like you've seen and like we focused last year, we're having to beat the pistons and the rods out of these things in order to run as hard as we do or blow the crankshaft out the bottom of it. Um, and, some of these other guys are sitting back drinking my ties. So I hope that they all put screw blowers in. Um, and then, uh, you know, my cherry picker will get used a lot this, uh, this yeah. season. I mean, that's all I can say because so. uh, it's a lot harder than it looks. And, and 
you know, I, I don't want to see it all go to screw bowers, but I do feel like when you see when you see ten other sanctions who say one thing and they kind of align with what I've been saying, what you've been saying. You know, everybody was mad at us when we talked about the 144, but they all figured out real quick that we weren't so far off, were we, country? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, that, then, that, you know. I, it, I don't know. It's just, it feels like, I, I, I've always told everybody, I like to go up to the burnout box knowing that I have a 50-50 chance of winning. I don't want to be that superior over You don't want to be four or five numbers behind You know, somebody. I mean, yeah. it's just not, it's not fun. And that's why I talk, and it's not that you're crying or whatever. You just, you, we spend a lot of money. If somebody beats me because they're better than me that day, then I'm good with that. But don't beat me just because you have a rule package in your favor right. and then fucking and, beat your chest and, and you're you just that to, much better. You have to have competitive parity. If you don't have that, everybody's going to roll out there with the same combo. Then that's and all they're going to see. Where, and it's coming at a deal. And then you're going to have to, I mean, like, uh, you know, Ryan's a great racer and he's got, he's got great people behind him and he's got the funding to be able to do that. But I felt, and then like you have felt, Dad felt, everybody felt that that 136 was just a superior combo with at the lighter weight. And uh, now you said these other sanctioned events, they've done caught on to it and they've, yep. you know, cut it off. They so it. they banned it out. But uh, just make a base, and that's what I said make a base weight for a big block pro charge car. Mm -hmm. Isn't and that what we have? Yeah, Don't we yeah. have a base weight. Yeah, because like I said the same thing. We could, you and I could save a lot of money if we could run a D rotor. Mm -hmm. We could go buy D rotors and get a weight break. Get a weight break. That'd be phenomenal because I'd sign up for that. Give us a hundred pound weight break yeah. and let us run the D rotor. Yeah, because like it's save. I could buy three blowers for what I got in one. Exactly. Uh, but you know the the deal is, I feel like set a base weight up. Um, screw bone big block weighs this. Screw bone big block. Pro char or pro charge big block weighs this, one forty point nine nine max. That's it. Yep. Put a max impeller size on it. We have a ninety two over deal. We're already restricted. Like we and, can't and see, they, they're a lot right. of switch. They can yeah. switch there because I had a pro charger. Trust me. Yep. When we go out west or even over here, if we you may break the pro charger, right? And you may break it, but it's going to run like well, hell, and you're going to have plenty to be able to put it back together. But you just spin it harder. And yeah. here's the thing: that same very pro charger. That they cut one millimeter off the wheel right. and called it a 136 mm -hmm. is the same pro charger we went 373 at 203 and change mile an hour. Yeah. And we did that at 2,800 pounds. They get to run at 2,700 pounds. Yeah. It's not, it don't take right. rocket science. And, and you don't that, have to run. And that's where we I tell people all the time. Years ago. Like, like, okay. And then the other, the other argument, I uh, don't want to get off track, but the other argument is like, okay, say hypothetically, screw blower goes 380. Just say hypothetically, the pro charger goes 378. Well, it's only two numbers. Why can't y'all pick up? I tell them that pro charger is going at 378 at ease. It yeah. drives back to the trailer and just sits there. They don't do nothing. It gets ready. It goes back out there and does it again. It don't matter if it's 100 degrees outside first round or if it's 50 degrees outside fifth round. Yep. It's going to run what it wants to run, and that's where it is. And that's where people are like, oh, well, you're crying. It's not that you're crying. You just want to be able to have – an opportunity to be able to do it. And I felt like if the screw blower was superior and it was, you know, just out there beating everybody, then yes, it should be nerfed too. It, mm -hmm. and, and it did, I believe last year they kicked us down to 92% overdrive, um, doing all that, but they, they need to run it across the board. And that's not my decision. Um, that right. it's the rule maker and all that. So, you know, that's going to be something to go into for next year. But I do feel like a lot of cars are going to switch over and go to the screw blower combo. And um, I hate it because, you know, everybody's going to have a screw blower. But on the other end, you know, I'm okay with it because I want somebody to come out there and yeah. improve it or it something. It won't take them long before they'll change their mind. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'll just say I thought, well, the biggest thing I, right now is, you know, the money, money to find one. And that's yeah. where I tell like, you, a couple people are hitting me up. Like, hey, because I have a spare one and everything. And you want it? Nope. Not selling it because I may need it, and I'm not yeah. switching my combo. The one car that's running really good right now, and, you know, the sad part about it is everybody takes that hit. It's no different than if you jump out there and run really good with the screw, everybody and all the screws are going to take that same hit. Yeah. Ryan's car is ex is running extremely well with the 136. Um, you know, Nate, I tried telling Nate that he wasn't as fast as Ryan, and Ryan <laughs> drug his ass that last race, but – Ryan's car is the one you have to base the rules off of. You can't base it off Kayla's car. You can't base it off 
you know, Robin Roberts car, you have to base it off what car is going to produce what and that what the numbers it can run. run. And, you know, they switched us to 98%. And like I told everybody, you know, th they're not going to change the rules unless they saw something. Don't matter. They all know what right. you've produced all year. They know what he's produced. They know what Kai's produced. Yep. I said, and if, and I feel like in the rules of the rules of the rule makers, that when we went to Arizona, ain't that where they changed the, the pool? Yeah. So I said, if there was, if we were all within one or two numbers, nothing's going to change. Right. But the 98 got added. Yep. So they seen the numbers, doesn't need to talk about it. There's, they just knew there's no way it was going to catch that combo. Right. But, you know, we also got hit harder than that. And a lot of people don't think about this either. You guys ran both combos so you can appreciate what I'm about to say. The boost curve is a lot more linear and a lot more forgiving on the Pro Charger than it is on the screw blower. For sure. So when they kicked us off the 36 tire and put us on the 34, mm -hmm. that didn't affect the Pro Charger guys as much. It didn't affect the nitrous cars as much because their nitrous car is not leaving with five kits on it. Uh, the Pro Charger car is not leaving. Leaving with 17 pounds right. of boost instead of 34. Exactly. So it, that 36 tire rule really hurt the screw car. I know it hurt us. It took me a, a while to mm -hmm. get the car to 60 and uh, to be competitive early, and it was ratio and converter. And, and even then, you guys know this, you have to, you, we're riding a fine line now as to whether or not the car will make the trip if we get after it on the smaller tire. Yeah. And uh, whereas before on the 36, it was a little more forgiving. Well, you know, so again, when we got hit from 98 to 92, plus the tire, plus the tire, we got hit twice. I don't. I don't know how much, and, and I don't know because I haven't ran it enough, but I don't know how much the 98 is going to do for us. Everybody thinks it. I mean, I'm thinking fit 40, 50 horsepower. I mean, I only seen a half a pound of boost. That's all I saw. Yep. So, I mean, and I ran, I ran both setups and literally in the same air, I literally only seen a half pound of boost. That was it, 0.57. That was yep. the only difference. I didn't, did you see, you didn't run it yet, did I you? I didn't change it. So, yeah. And I wanted to stay at the 92 because I already had the fuel right for the 92. Yep. But like I said, I, I literally in the same air, I only saw 0. 0.57 pounds of boost. That was it. Right. And I, you know, and that's, and that your guys is a good, a good indicator of that because you got a good cylinder head on it. John's car, I did run at 98 over um, at the last race and we picked up like two pounds of boost on it. But we picked up two pounds of boost on it because it's got an NHRA legal head. It's got my mule motor, what, the motor we call mule is what's in John's car. It's an NHRA legal two 400 valve deal. Um, you know, it's a Brad six head. I mean, it's, it's, that thing's a dinosaur. It's an 18 year old technology in the motor and it's, it's just restrictive. So it doesn't 98, 92. Don't matter. Know, it's it. really not going to matter. You're saying John needs to update his program. Well, yeah. I mean, that's, it's one of those <laughs> things that, that just has to happen, but you know, I mean, um, certainly, uh, we're leaving a lot on the table with the GTR and the fact that, you know, that it just doesn't have the program that it needs. But, uh, uh, you know, he'll work on it. He'll get it to where it needs to be. And uh, if not, he'll continue to run where he's at. And it'll just have my It just had to be okay with it. It'll have to have my mule motor in it. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> that's just how it is. We're going to go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and get into this last deal. I've been wanting to talk about this. I've seen a couple things on the internet. And, you know, you've had a pretty good past with this guy for quite a while, even on the street, on the track. Y'all have had a lot of altercations. Um, and that someone asked me to ask about it, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, break it. What's the history with you and Booster GT, and how are things now? I don't really know where the history was. Yeah, uh, Y'all have a lot of controversy. Yeah. He just uh, – <laughs> Well, you're always leaking oil. Yeah, right. That was according, to him. according to him, yeah. So I, Every I, time you come up, Jim, you leak fucking yeah. oil on the track. The uh, They're going to say what they want to say and think what they want to think, but I'll say this. There are those, those who can do mm – -hmm. Those who can't commentate. Yeah, I that's, agree. That's what it's all about. Boosted has little man syndrome. Damn. And he talks big behind the screen on the computer. I, kn I knew this was coming. But he won't say shit to my face ever. I don't have a reason to come talk to him to his face because the last time I said anything, we see how that ended up. So the dislike is real between y'all two. Oh, I can't stand him. Ah, so yeah. Like, there, I mean, here's the, I, like, like a lot of people think it's like yeah. for the show and everything. No, like. little, little childish bullshit. Here's something to say. When I went to the final at Maple Grove, it was such a big thing to him. He had to leave early because 
he got in trouble because he wouldn't announce my name when we came up. He would just announce the guy in the other lane. And I did hear that. Too, well, so, so that's not pretty just... much wow. as the day goes on and the cars keep getting eliminated. You were sooner there. or later. You got to say my name. Yeah. And so, uh, he's got such a disdain for whatever reason mm -hmm. that, uh, he doesn't want to say my name on the intercom and he thinks that that somehow is going to affect me. Um, Cause I kept hearing how my social media would fall off and I was, you know, I was just going to be done. Well, I mean, as you see, my social media is going through the roof and, uh, our, we continue to <laughs> up arrow, uh, and that's fine, but I don't do this for social media. I'm a racer and I don't care if the race master, and he's not even the race master, the guy holding the mic, I don't care if the announcer likes me or doesn't like me. It's not going to change anything, but it's such a big deal to him that he had to leave. Damn, I didn't know that. Right. Hey, I did hear that though. I mean, See, that, I, 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 and that's one thing I can I, say I is that, that, like, you know, us being in racers, I, I enjoy watching the show at the end of the year because you get to actually, you kind of hear little bits throughout the season of like what happened, who won, whatever, yeah. but you kind of get to see everybody's reaction of what going forward. But when everything. you get to go back and watch the show and then you see somebody say something, you kind of sit back and go, uh, that's one thing I, I can honestly that right to say that, but. <laughs> yeah. I, got, I see you. I yeah. got you. And that's one thing I can honestly say. And I've, I've caught that before from people. Or, like, I've had people message me and be like, hey, you're going to see this on the show tonight. Same thing. It'd be calling me. You're going to see this on the show tonight. Don't, don't. I was just doing it for TV. That's one thing I can honestly say I've never done is if I felt a way about something, I'm going to express it. Yeah. If I don't feel that way, I'm not going to fake it. I'm not going right. to say something to, and then to be like, oh, hey, don't worry about what I said. We're still friends. No. no. If I said it, I meant it and what <laughs> yeah, is going absolutely. on. And yeah. I never have to worry about it or question anything because I meant what I said at that time. And I'll stand on whatever I say moving forward. So that's where that's one thing I laugh about is whenever people right. do that. And uh, and, it, it, and there is there's a lot of snakes out there. I'm not yep. going to lie. Um, so but uh, yeah, that, that deal there. I mean, y'all had a little altercation when we were out there in yeah. uh, I mean, uh, California. He flat cheated a racer. And he said that, uh, of course, you know, on television, he got to come back and tell his side at the uh, end of the night, you know, that on the TV show, well, you know, Jim didn't have a dog in the fight. Well, Jim did have a dog in the fight. Number one, I was one of those racers who was racing for that pot. Okay. Number two, I was up there helping Dean. And number three, we had a two day long driver's meeting about all those rules. And as far as I'm concerned, we didn't need to have them because none of it was followed. Follow them. And so, yeah, I had a problem with it, but the bigger problem was back to, Season four, when Boosted got in my face on the starting line that night over not giving us two minutes, not following the rules again, I told him, I said, if you ever get in my face again, I'm going to smack the shit out of you. You were standing there. Mm -hmm. And so he has this thing, this little man syndrome that he wants to jump in my face. And then he wanted to say I went in the street. I told him, that, let's go out on the street right now. Camera's off. We'll go out here on this very street. Well, he wanted to go to Texas and race. His car was on the same property mine was. I don't know why we need to leave there and go to Texas. We were in California. Yeah, we were in California. I wanted to race him right then, right there. When that night was over filming, drag that yellow son bitch out on the street and let's run him. I'll show you how street it was. He didn't want to. He declined. Wow. So, I mean, I don't know whose street, but it, where I come from, you were called out. And then he said he couldn't run for that much money. I said, well, run for however much you want to. Well, that takes that out of the equation. You know, he wants to talk about, he likes to put his digs in, and he'll do the same thing here. He's going to listen to this podcast, and he's going to go back, and he's going to contort and twist and do however he wants, and he's going to make his people uh, think a certain way. And, I mean, whatever, man. The bottom line is this. You don't want no part of me on a big tire. You don't want no part of me on a small tire. You don't want no part of me one-on-one, -on -one, or you and your friends, for that matter. Uh, I mean, you can bring a couple of buddies with you. We can handle it like men. You don't want none of those things, and you never have. But it's easy to pump fake on the internet, and it's easy to pump fake on TV. I'm 50 years old. I'm not 100 pounds heavier than him. I'm maybe 50 pounds. not my fault he doesn't eat. <laughs> <laughs> God, God damn. damn. This will be awful. I, knew, I knew it was going to come to this, but someone told me to ask. Hey, I, I, I do remember that night, too. I was sitting on the wall. Yep. 
I think you were over. But, well, I don't know. Were you by I me? back away? All right, you, hey. you were about me and you. Were I just tell people all the time when people have an altercation or something. Uh, like, I can't stand people that try to like break it up or because that's where you're gonna get somebody hurt or that. I just backed away. I but just, me and me and Justin were over sitting on the wall just bullshitting, it. and <laughs> next thing we know, fucking shit flying, boosting flies one way. I'm like, what the fuck is going <laughs> like on? Like it happened so fast, and I didn't know exactly what was and going it wasn't on. Wasn't a sucker punch. I open hand smacked him like a mouthy child needs, <laughs> and that's what he got. Damn, that's all bad. Are y'all good now or? I mean, I thought we were is good. Is that one of them when you fuck around and find out? That's right. That is? Country. You and I have had words in the past, have we not? Mm-hmm. We're sitting here next to each other. Yeah. Because, like, for me, 10 minutes after that thing happened, I was over it. Now, he had some dude with him that was puffed up, uh, but he'd see me in the bathroom over there at the campground. He wouldn't say nothing. He'd see me when I was going to take a shower. He wouldn't say nothing. But I guess he was only puffed up when the TV was on. But anyway. Uh, I it was for the cameras. Yeah, so I thought everything was good. But then we keep getting these little digs on the internet and we keep getting these little stories on the internet. And then we get to the racetrack. He don't want to announce my name. Like I care. Yeah, my yeah. thing is if I'm the last guy standing that night, sooner or later, you're going to have to say my name. Yeah. You know, I think to me and your relationship early on, I, one, I don't think you knew me or understood me. I didn't know you and understood you, but for me, you know, there, there were some things that was said and it really pertains to Justin. You yeah. know what I mean? So, and, and for me, like, you know, I really don't know any other way to handle shit other than when you say handle like men, because that's what I'll do. Right, right, wrong, or indifferent. If I get the fuck beat out of me, I get the fuck beat out of me, but I'm yep. going to, we're going to figure something out. And that's just who I am. Yeah. And I'm, and I'm never, now that I know, I think you know me and I know you, you know that I'm not no different, no matter what. Yep. That's just the way I am. That's the way I was raised. Uh, he, he, he's a grown man. Trust me. He can take care of himself. And if he's ever completely out of line, I'll, I'll handle it no matter what I I am my family's protector and I'll always be that way. Uh, my dad was that way. Um, when it comes to him and it comes to my other son, Tyler, even though both of them can fuck me up, you know what I mean? But at the end of the day, I'm going to stand in front of them and I'll take a fucking bullet from them. That's just all there is to it. That's our jobs. Yeah, absolutely. And I'll do that until my dad died at 75 years old and he was the same fucking way At, at, at no matter what. But one thing about it, if fucking shit ever hit the fan, I didn't never have to look for my pops. My right. fucking pops would be in front yep. of me fucking getting with it. I'll I mean, tell my, my guys will tell you this about me. Um, you know, I don't pretend to live a lifestyle that I don't live. Uh, they've seen me get right in public. They've seen me, you know, drop people where they stand in public. They've seen a side of me that I don't like for other people to see, but it happens. Uh, but my guys will tell you this. My son hopefully will tell you this. I have their back 110% all the time. That's my job. If they're wrong, we'll talk about that later. But I'm going to have their back yeah. regardless. And, and your dad's the same way. Um, we may disagree. And it's the same thing. Like, I'm not going to let somebody hurt you no more than I let somebody hurt your pop. And if he's wrong... Me and Pop talk about it later. <laughs> but yeah. I ain't going to let no shit hit the fan like that. Uh, yeah. And that's just who I am. That's how I was raised. Well, that's how I, I made it. I think as men, you should always have a certain amount of respect for each other. It's yep. all there is to it. Just don't cross that line. Especially when it comes to racing and stuff, man. Just keep it fucking yeah. racing. You that's know? what I tell don't people Don't make it personal. Don't yeah. make it When people family, make it personal or serious, shit. then yeah. it's not fun for me no more. And that and night out there on the street, had Boosted just said, it's out of my hands. That's all he had to say. If he'd have just said, it's out of my hands. Because he knows the call was wrong. He later admitted the call was wrong. You know what I'm saying? I, I think when people make it personal, they're defeated. Yep. Right? They don't know any other yeah. way to act other than try and take it to a level and, that it just shouldn't go right. there. And what I said, and you go back and rewind it a hundred times, what I said was, that ain't street. And it's not. We don't have reruns on the street. The light came on. It wasn't like it didn't come on. And I it remember, doesn't matter. I remember that, uh, yeah. whatever, that whole deal. I said, that ain't street, and it's not. And the I think he said up. something about it was the trigger. He was he didn't pull whatever. It something he said it didn't come on when I wanted it to. Right. Don't give a damn. That don't matter. Came on. Yeah, yeah, the light came on. And the rule is, can't he, leave before the he, light. He left right. before the light. He should have been disqualified. Other car left. Other car crossed the center line. Dean left clean. Dean left second. Dean didn't cross the center line. And Dean, and Dean beat him to the finish line. Dean won three times in one round. And was told he had to I remember seeing that. And, and, yeah. and 
I I kind of hated that deal because it was more of a bully scene to me. Yes. I felt like it was a, uh, you know, and and I, I don't this really is know the way dude. it is and there ain't going to be no yep. other way. That, and, yeah, but that but the me. the other drivers too were that were part of that and that I want to say it was with Axeman, wasn't it? It was. You know, and he's there with JJ and all that and that's where it kind of it was more of a bully scene to me because like I mean, I think one of them kind of spoke up to Pinky about, you know, if you got something to say, we'll just go in and handle it real quick. And I don't think Pinky's that type of guy. Now, if they would have said it maybe to the wrong person, maybe it would have been a different deal. But yep. that's where the whole deal, I think it was more of a bully thing, and they just had to go with that. Axeman told me that night he lost. Yeah, I, I mean. He, he, Axeman came to me, and he said, I, we shouldn't be rerunning this. But for a 100 grand, if they're going to let me rerun it, I'm going to rerun, rerun it. it. It is what it is. And I would, too, because, we're, number one, we're filming a show. But, but, but. What should have been said was, it's out of my hands. Yeah. Then, and then yeah, maybe y'all wouldn't have had the whole deal. It would never happen. But he still had a problem with me. He's had a problem with me for for whatever reason, for however long. because you leak oil on the fucking Yeah, track. I guess. I mean, it's not like he cleans it hey, up. Hey, <laughs> I was staring on the star line, too. I swear to God. That motherfucker said, Jim, you always leak oil on the fucking track. Jim's like, when? <laughs> Dude, I thought they were going to roll that time. I really did. I made sure I did this year just to make up for it. Though. Oh, God. <laughs> They're good, but uh, well, that's about all I got. We're gonna we're gonna wrap this thing up. Uh, appreciate you coming on. And I appreciate uh, being on. It's good, you know. Yeah, it was a it's a good deal. I'm sure people are gonna watch this and they're gonna take it however they want. I mean, I, 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 I wanted to start this deal, and that's why I told my dad when I started this thing there was gonna be no, you know, censoring it and all that to where that you can see a lot of these other deals where you're not allowed to say this, you're not allowed to do that. I mean, I, I, that's one thing I am big on, and I've already said it, is that when you say something, you stand on it. You've had your same story the whole time. So that means that is it, how you are. That's how you feel about the situation. Yep. It is. When somebody's changing their stories and they're doing yep. all that, then they, you know, yep. they got they want to try to make people like them for what they got right. going on. And that and that's, uh, so that's yeah. one thing that me and you, I think, have in common, and it's good. So, I'm glad that you know you said what you had to say and uh, doing all that and uh, you know being our first guest. This was a um, right. amazing deal and. Uh, but I know. mean, I will say this: Can it be squash? Yeah, yeah. Just keep your mouth shut. Yeah, that's all you got to do. Keep your fingers on your side of the keyboard. Don't type about it. Don't talk about it. And if you're going to, then fucking be about it. Because if you ain't gonna be about it, then. You that's you know, just being a baby. You know how I get with so, with stuff like that because I know how my temper is. I know mm -hmm. my past is. I'll be trying to tell this guy he got to stay off the internet. <laughs> I, but the thing is, though, <laughs> hey, but, I, but I'm but I'm real good face to face because yeah. I'm the same oh, motherfucker. He's going, he's going to Texas to buy a trailer from the guy that he was going to fucking curb stomp. <laughs> Now they're best friends. Well, they're tight now. It's all right. But the thing is, though, I'm the same motherfucker face to face because yep. I, I don't know any other way to be. But if there's someone that just won't get right, I just won't fuck with them because at the end of the day, it's all going to be bad. One, yep. one of us are going to get hurt. So I I'll, I'll just, if yep. I got to leave a motherfucker alone, I'll just leave that motherfucker alone. I don't want anybody to view me any different than who I am. And no. I say that all the time. Like, this is who I am. This is what you're going to get. I don't want you to think that I'm a certain way mm -hmm. and then find out later that I'm a different way. Cause that's yeah. to me, that's like, that's the worst kind of person. I want you to know me for me and just be 100. Yeah. I would just like, I might be right. I might be wrong. But the one thing I will tell you is when I'm wrong, I admit that I'm wrong yeah. and I've done it publicly many times, yeah. except to my wife. I'm always right with her. So don't <laughs> tell her. she'll tell you I'm always right. That's I just think Sam, some dudes take it to a different level that they shouldn't. <laughs> And it's really because they haven't really caught not caught a real fucking beat down. That's the problem. Right. And, and you know it that you you really get fucked up. That'll change your attitude about how you say some shit. As and grown, be careful with that right. tongue. As you know? a grown ass man, country. If somebody smacked you, and they say, and you oh, said, man, I'm gonna tell you right now. If somebody slaps me, I will lose my shit. Right. If somebody smacked you, yeah, and you said, oh, they hit like a girl. Would you be afraid to approach them the second time? No. The, it. I would rather you haul off and knock the fuck out of me than to slap me. Because if you slap me, it's a fucking insult at that point. It is That's not like, you know what I mean? Like just if, I, but I, 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 I've never been open hand slapped though. So I can't tell you that. We I mean, call that being street where I'm from. <laughs> bro. That's like the most <laughs> level of disrespect that you can right. throw to a dude. Yep. You know, I get it. I understand that. But man, that would just set me over. You'll the find out what a man's made of real quick. You smack him. Dude, I just had to get my ass beat. I mean, it is. I, but the thing is, though, with me, I 
you know, if something like that happens to me, and I'm not, I'm not by far no bad motherfucker, but I will black the fuck out. I forget everything. I will freak out if someone fucking tries to. We just gonna like fight that. until we can't fight no more. And that might, all there is we to may it. have to fight tomorrow. That's all there is well, to it. We may have it, to man. fight the next yeah. time I see you. That's okay? right. You may have to whip my ass we'll, ten or twelve times. We'll get it out of our <laughs> system sooner or later. That's right, That's right man. Well, I appreciate you coming on, guys. And uh, if you haven't done already, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Uh, turn that bell notification on. We post videos every Thursday at 6 o'clock. And, uh, you know, Friday we launch out on all our other platforms. You can listen to uh, the video version or the audio version of Swan Talk. And uh, we're going to keep doing these deals, keep moving forward, and see if we keep growing this thing. I'll see you all later.